So chemist, now that you understand the molar mass of atoms, we're going to talk about the molar mass of molecules. So here we're putting two or more atoms together to make molecules, and we're going to need to do some simple addition to figure out the molar mass of molecules. So for example, let's start with NH3. Okay, NH3 contains one N and three H's. We get that from the subscripts. Remember the invisible ones in chemistry, so there's an invisible one there, one N and three H's. So let's figure out individually what the molar mass of nitrogen is and what the molar mass of hydrogen is. So you'll go to your periodic table and you'll find nitrogen. Okay, One nitrogen is 14.01 grams per mole. So now we're going to look at hydrogen on the periodic table and we have three hydrogens and each hydrogen has a molar mass of 1.01 grams per mole. Okay, So total, 1 times 14.01 is 14.01 and 3 times 1.01 .01 is 3.03. .03. So total, we should have 17.04 grams per mole. What I did was just added these two rows up, 14.01 and 3.03. .03. So this right here, 17.04 grams per mole, is the molar mass of NH3. So that's the first step of a problem. Let's say the question is, you have 2.75 moles of NH3. And I want to know how many grams do you have? Okay, so you'll start with 2.75 moles of NH3. That's the only number you have so far. I gave that to you. And then you want to go to grams. So because you don't want moles, you'll put it on the bottom, and we'll put grams on the top. Now the conversion from moles to grams is the molar mass. Now because we're talking about NH3, we already calculated it. It's 17.04 grams per one mole. Moles cancel out. We do 2.75 times 17.04, and we should get 46.9 grams of NH3. So the only difference between this and what we were doing before was that instead of dealing with one atom, like gold, for example, we're dealing with a molecule of NH3. So we had to add up all the molar masses of 1N and 3Hs that we did in this top section. So now, chemists, it's your turn. Here we have another example. We have PBNO32. PBNO32. Now, maybe you remember from before, you can figure out the name of that. That's called lead to nitrate. Lead to nitrate. First, please find the molar mass. Okay, we're going to find what is the molar mass of PBNO32. Okay, so you're going to need your periodic table and most likely your calculator for this section. Try it out. Okay, chemists, so here it is. The molar mass of PbNO32 led to nitrate. So hopefully you figured out from Pb here, there's only one of them. So we have one Pb. Its molar mass on the periodic table is 207.2 grams per mole. So 1 times 207.2 is 207.2 grams per mole. Now n, the key is here is to distribute, just like we do in math class. So there's one n here, but there's two NO3 total. So you have two n's. So you have two n's. So you have two times the molar mass of nitrogen, which is 14.01 grams per mole. That gets you 28.02 grams per mole. Now again, you need to distribute. There's three O's in nitrate, but we have two nitrates. So 3 times 2 makes 6 oxygen. So 6 times the molar mass of oxygen from the periodic table, which is 16 grams per mole, gets you 96 grams per mole. Now we're going to add up all of these, and we get 331.22 grams per mole, and that is the molar mass of lead to nitrate. So now let's do an example. Let's say that we have 
3.89 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of lead to nitrate of PbNO3 2. Okay, 3.89 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of PbNO3 2. I want to know how many grams is this? I tell you how many molecules, but how many grams is it? Okay, so you'll start out with 3.89 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Again, that's what I give you. Okay, now because we're talking about molecules, we got to get rid of it because we don't want it. We want to get to grams. So let's put molecules on the bottom. Okay, sorry my writing's turning it into chicken scratch here. But let's put molecules on the bottom so that they'll cancel out. Hopefully from the last lesson you can figure out that you need to go from molecules to moles. And then you can put moles on the bottom and go from moles to grams. So going from molecules to moles, hopefully you remember that's Avogadro's number. Before we were talking about going from atoms to moles because we were talking about atoms. We talked about berkelium atoms, for example. If you have a certain amount of berkelium atoms, you use Avogadro's number to get to moles of berkelium. But now we're talking about molecules of PbNO3 too. So we're talking about molecules, so we can go from molecules to mole. So Avogadro's number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules in one mole. Now we're going to use our molar mass here, 331.22 grams per mole. 331.22 grams per one mole. Okay, so you'll see that molecules cancel out with molecules, moles cancel out with moles, and we should get 214 grams of our lead to nitrate, of our PbNO3 too. Again, I would put this in parentheses and put this in parentheses so that when you divide it, it works out correctly on your calculator. So you take 3.89 times 10 to the 23rd divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd and then multiply that by 331.22 and you should get 214 grams. So now chemists, let's say I wanted to do a slightly different problem. Let me move this up and this up and we'll keep going. Okay, so let's say I wanted to know in 3.89 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of PbNO3 2 How many nitrogen atoms do we have? How many nitrogen atoms? So you'll start again with the only number you have, which is 3.89 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Molecules of what? Molecules of PbNO3 2. Okay. Not quite sure what to do yet, but I've got molecules and I don't want it, so I'll at least write that on the bottom. Okay. Now the key here is to think about our formula right here of our compound, PbNO3,2. So our compound is PbNO3,2, and in PbNO3,2 we have two nitrogens. Remember we said that before, it's sort of scrambled, but it's written up here. You should have that in your notes. We have two nitrogens because we distribute that two. We have six oxygens and we have one Pb. Okay, so we have in one molecule, we have two nitrogen atoms. Okay, I'll say that again. In one molecule, we have two nitrogen atoms. And we showed that here. There's one molecule is this whole thing. Okay, it's actually a compound. There's two nitrogen atoms. Okay, so all we need to do now is do the math. We do 3.89 times 10 to the 23rd times 2, and we get 7.78 times 10 to the 23rd N3.
atoms. So this is how nitrogen atoms in 3.89 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of PbNO32. Chemist, here's your next question. You have 0 0.108 kilograms of PCl5, and I want to know how many Cl atoms do you have in that many kilograms of PCl5. So let's take a second to think about your steps. Okay, I only give you one number. You're going to have to start with that. So you'll start with kilograms. Okay, hopefully you should think that this isn't very helpful to be in kilograms. So what could you go to from kilograms? You've got to get all the way to atoms. Hopefully you can figure out how to get to grams. After grams, okay, always the key when we're dealing with amounts in chemistry is to get to moles. So kilograms to grams, grams to moles, and after moles, you can go from moles to molecules. Because PCl5 contains multiple atoms, using Avogadro's number, you would get to molecules before you would get to atoms. So you go from moles to molecules using Avogadro's number. Okay? And then you can go from molecules to atoms, just like we did with lead to nitrate. Okay, so why don't you press pause now and try it out using that roadmap. So chemists, here is what you should do. Okay, you take 0.108 kilograms that you start with. As I showed you here, you want to go from kilograms to grams. So you should write kilograms on the bottom and grams on the top. That will make the kilograms cancel out. You should know that there's a thousand grams in a kilogram. Kilo means a thousand, so you put the big number with the small unit and the small number with the big unit. So there's a thousand grams in one kilogram. But we don't want to be in grams. So we're going to convert from grams to moles. Put grams in the bottom so that will cancel out to one mole. Now how did I figure out this number? 208.22 grams per mole. That's the molar mass of PCL5. So what I did was from the periodic table I added up the molar mass of one phosphorus plus the molar mass of five CLs. So one phosphorus and five CLs should add up to 208.22 using the molar masses on the periodic table. Okay, so now I'm in moles, but I don't want to be. So I need to put moles in the bottom so that will cancel out. And I use Avogadro's number to convert from moles to molecules because I'm talking about molecules of PCL5 my Avogadro's number unit is in molecules per mole. But I don't want to be in molecules, so I'm going to write it on the bottom so molecules will cancel out. Now this is the key that we haven't done. In one PCL5, there's five Cl atoms. Actually, we did just do that. We did that in the last problem using nitrogen. So there's five Cl atoms in one PCL5. That's that five right there. It means in one molecule of PCL5, there's five Cl atoms. So I put five on the top and the one PCL5 molecule on the bottom. So now I need to do the math. You take 0 0.108, multiply by 1,000, divide by 208.22, multiply by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and then multiply by 5. And the answer you should get using three sig figs, because 0.108 is three sig figs, is 1.56 times 10 to the 24th, and my unit is Cl atoms. Okay, if you got that, nice job. Now I'm going to make a little road map to show what we, what we did and what we still can do. So I'm going to put moles in the middle. That's like your key unit. Okay, moles. Now we can go from moles to molecules. We can go from moles to molecules, molecules to atoms. Okay, so we already did that just above. We went from moles to molecules to atoms. Okay, and before moles we had grams. So that was is what we did in the above problem. We went from grams to moles to molecules to atoms. And before grams, we actually went to kilograms. You could go from kilograms, centigrams, milligrams, get it to grams, and they'll go grams, moles, molecules, atoms. And I drew double-sided arrows here 
because we can go back and forth either way. Now I'm going to add one more thing, okay, which we talked about a while ago, and you should know you can convert from milliliters to grams. Okay, think about the units, gram per milliliter, gram per milliliter, what is that? That's the unit for density. Anything with two units in it is a great conversion factor. So the density is how you convert between grams and milliliters. So now I'm going to write the conversions here. So we have density gets us between milliliters and grams. Molar mass, these are your numbers from the periodic table. Molar mass gets us between grams and moles. Avogadro's number is getting between moles and molecules. Okay, and I'm just going to say the formula. The formula is going to get us between molecules and atoms. And what I mean by that, the formula, is like PCL5 up top here. And PCL5, that's the chemical formula. So in one molecule of PCL5, there are five Cl atoms. That's what I mean by the formula. You can figure out from the subscripts in your chemical formula how many atoms in the whole molecule. So chemists, here is your last example problem that you're going to work on. If you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of HF, I know that number might sound familiar, but just go with it. If you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of HF, how many milliliters of HF do you have? And I tell you here that the density, okay, this D means density, the density of HF is 0.97 grams per milliliter. So you're trying to go from molecules to milliliters, and some, at some point you're probably going to want to use this, 0.97 grams per milliliter is the density of HF. So pause it now and try to work through this on your own. I'll give you a hint. You should be starting with this number. This is how much HF you have. Start with that. Pause it now. Thanks. So chemists, here is your answer. You start with 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of HF. Okay. Now you don't want to be in molecules, you want to get to milliliters. So following our roadmap, you're going to go from molecules to moles. Again, always helpful to get into moles. Molecules to moles. Okay. Mo the conversion between molecules and moles is Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Molecules cancels out, and now you're in moles. So now you need to go from moles to grams. How do you go from moles to grams? That's using the molar masses from the periodic table. The molar mass of H is 1.01 .01 and F is 19. So you add that up and you get 20.01 grams per mole. Okay, you write mole in the bottom, so moles canceled out. And now you're in grams. You don't want to be in grams, you want to be in milliliters. So I give you the density here. I give you the density is 0.97 gram per milliliter. You write grams in the bottom so that grams will cancel out. So you end up putting 0.97 grams because it's 0.97 grams per one milliliter. So on the bottom you put 0.97 grams per one milliliter on the top. So on your calculator you end up taking 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd and I would put it in parentheses and you divide by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd in parentheses. Obviously that's the same number so you divide by it and you get 1. You multiply by 20.01 and then you divide by 0.97. And what you get is 20.6288, so on and so forth. Okay? Technically, because I give you two sig figs here, I give you three here, but I give you two here, so your answer should have two sig figs. So 20.6 rounds to 21. Two sig figs. So your answer is 21 milliliters of HF. Great job. See you in class.